In this lesson, we'll present an example to motivate the need for lower bounds for the performance as quantified by the mean square error for estimators of random and non-random parameters. Well, let's begin by thinking about a situation in which we observe k samples of a Gaussian random variable that has zero mean and a deterministic but unknown standard deviation, sigma. The maximum likelihood estimator for sigma is the square root of the sample variance, which, if we normalize each sample by its standard deviation, can be written in terms of the square root of a chi-squared random variable, s, which is the sum of the squares of k independent zero mean Gaussian random variables, each of which has been normalized to have unit variance. The distribution for this random variable depends on the number of elements in the sum, and accordingly we say that the random variable s is a chi-square random variable with k degrees of freedom. To evaluate the performance for this estimator, we might compute the mean square estimation error which, when we substitute the form for the estimator, results in an expression that involves the expected value for s and the expected value for the square root of s. And then using the chi-square density, the expected value for s turns out to be equal to k, and the expected value for the square root of s turns out to be a function that depends on the number of samples, k, and a gamma function. Well, this gives an expression that evaluates the mean square error for the maximum likelihood estimator as a function of the true parameter value and the number of samples in the observation. We might ask ourselves, though, if another estimator would have a lower mean square error. Now, as a simple way to search for a better estimator, we might simply scale the maximum likelihood estimator by a factor a. Then, if we replace the maximum likelihood estimator with its functional form, and as before, carry out all of the algebra and the required expectations, we'd get an expression that's now a function of the scale factor a. Then we could differentiate this mean square error with respect to the scale factor, and if we set the derivative equal to zero, we'd find the, the value that lowers the mean square error for the maximum likelihood estimator. Here, for instance, is a plot of the mean square error for the maximum likelihood estimator divided by the mean square error for the optimized maximum likelihood estimator as a function of the number of samples. Whereas we can, we can improve on the mean square error for small numbers of samples, the improvement becomes much less as the number of samples increases. Of course, we could try any other estimators that are significantly different from the maximum likelihood estimator and see if their mean square error is even lower still. Before doing that, though, it would be nice and helpful if we could identify a lower bound for the mean square error. Then, if an estimator attains that bound, we'd know that no other estimator could be better. With this in mind, we'll address lower bounds for the mean square error for both random and non-random parameters in subsequent lessons.